A man gets stranded on another planet full of infectious parasites that make people go berserk. When a team is sent to rescue him, one accident causes all hell to break loose. Can he still make his way back home? Let's find out in the movie. In the 23rd century, the majority of people on Earth are living below the poverty line. This results in many of them taking dangerous jobs like mining, military, and space exploration outside of the planet. This space exploration is made possible through Slipstream. By turning matter into a data signal, Slipstream can transmit everything to a fixed coordinate anywhere in the universe. All of the voluntary trained personnel are given an Apex device fused into the nervous system that will allow them to use Slipstream. However, Slipstream is a highly controversial topic because of the high rate of fatalities and data corruption. Today, a newbie named Wit is going to start his new job at West Coast Search and Rescue Team. His wife, Lisa, wakes up early to see Wit before he leaves. Giving Wit a picture of them, Lisa tells him to come home to her whatever happens. When Wit is about to go, Lisa tries to stop him, nervous that something bad might happen to her husband. But Wit promises that he will be home for dinner later that night. At the West Coast Slipstream Division, the captain welcomes Wit to the team. The West Coast Division has a very good relationship and bond with each other. After some of them are suited up, the captain orders them to head out first. There, the captain orders Dave and Wit to meet after work so they can talk about the mistakes in the jump that Dave has made. But Wit declines, saying that he promised Lisa that he would come home for dinner. Then, all of a sudden, an announcement notes that squads 14 to 28 are preparing for a jump. Using a built-in device in his suit, the captain puts up a hologram where the three of them watch squads doing the jump on a mining site. After a few seconds, the squad jumps back and all of them are screaming in terror with blood running down their faces. A warning shows that there have been multiple quarantine breaches. The medical team immediately attends to them but one of them starts shooting everyone. Just then, the captain, Dave, and Wit are locked up in a locker room due to the lockdown protocol. The whole division is in chaos as the returning squads start attacking everyone they see. Left with no other choice, the captain orders Dave to get his jump box. However, when Dave gets the box, it locks on the coordinates of Infinity, the mining station where the rampaging squads came from. Dave doesn't want to go there, but now here is being filled with poisonous gas and they will die if they don't jump immediately. Unfortunately, Dave cannot put in the coordinates in the captain's apex because he cannot decipher its code. Due to this, only Wit and Dave manage to do a jump while the captain dies because of the poisonous gas. However, during their jump, Dave disappears due to an accident, while Wit is the only one who gets transported to Infinity. Meanwhile, at the East Coast Command, they are in shambles upon an intel coming from the mining site in Infinity. They call out the East Coast Search and Rescue Team to address the problem. The team consists of Menzies, Jackler, Huntington, Captain Johansson, Greenwich, Kent, Boxen, and Mannings. The Chief briefs them on the situation. The OI Infinity is the furthest outpost in the galaxy. It is best known for the worst space disaster in history. In this disaster, 1,600 workers are killed by a mineral which is only found on that planet and turns out to be highly volatile. Therefore, the station in Infinity is permanently shut down. After the event, the headquarters sent a team to investigate the matter, but an accident happened to members of the team that resulted in their deaths, leaving only one survivor, a research officer named Montoli. When the headquarters tried to get Montoli back, he disabled his apex to stay at the facility. Worse, Montoli plans to send payloads of dangerous minerals to an undisclosed location on Earth. After a period of Slipstream's transportation, the minerals will be delivered to Earth after six minutes according to statistics. Just then, the chief receives the news about the fall of the entire West Coast Division. As it turns out, squads 14 to 28 were sent to extract Montoli, but they all died except for one person, Wit, who has managed to escape to Infinity. Wrapping things up, the officer says that the military approach didn't work against Montoli, so they will be sending the best search and rescue team for the mission. 
they are tasked with stopping Montoli's plan and taking Wit back home. Because of time dilation in space, even though the incident only happened a few minutes ago, Wit has been on Infinity for a week now. Worse, his supplies are starting to run low. At this time, the team uses the slipstream to go to Infinity. They don't waste time and immediately proceed with the mission. Johansson orders Boxen and Jackler to find Wit, while Menzies, Greenwich, and Kent look for the payload. Then, Mannings, Huntington, and he will go to the generator. After everyone receives their orders, they start to move out. At this moment, the team finds several dead bodies around. The group of Manzies finds the payloads and immediately starts working on the control panel. They are trying to figure out what Montoli will use as a power source to transport the payloads through Slipstream. Meanwhile, the group of Johansson also arrives at the generator. Just then, Huntington starts working on it while Mannings checks the surroundings. Looking around, Mannings is horrified when he sees the human skin and body parts around the place. A little later, Huntington finally manages to turn on the generator, powering up the place. As soon as the computer starts working, they flash a message asking the team to identify themselves. Johansson replies to the person operating the computers, saying that they are the search and rescue team. Asked about their mission directives, Johansson types they're here to rescue Wit. Suddenly, steam starts blowing hard and the station gets locked down. On the other part of the station, the group of Boxen finally comes in contact with Wit. After a while, Wit lifts up the lockdown protocol and the whole team regroups in a room with Wit. He apologizes to them, saying that he had to be sure they are not like the others. Wit explains that the mining station has become a slaughterhouse. As it turns out, the miners were not killed by a blast, rather, they got infected with something mysterious to him. The infected became very strong, brutal, and hard to kill. He guesses that the infection is passed to another person by blood. Wit tried to get home using Slipstream, but failed. He then hid and blew the external vents, killing everyone in the station. He is traumatized and emotionally scarred by what he has been through. Mannings asks him about the skins and body parts he saw earlier, but Wit swears he had nothing to do with it. Huntington next asks how he managed to power up the whole station. Wit reveals that the entire station runs on binary codes. Hearing this, Kent asks if he can permanently shut down the payload. This is when Wit realizes that the search and rescue team is not solely there for him. He freaks out and Jackler immediately consoles him, promising that they will take him home. Convinced, Wit starts working and he discovers that the payload will head to the Pacific Ocean just offshore of San Francisco. However, Wit needs someone to go down to the furnace room to force the override. Menzies volunteers for the task and Johansson orders Jackler and Greenwich to accompany him. Wit then tells them to look outside the window. Opening the shutters, the team sees many windmills powering up the station. After a while, Huntington approaches Wit to ask if he's infected to which Wit insists that he's not. At this time, he begins the overriding procedure. When the time is right, Wit orders Menzies and Greenwich to turn the valves off. Finally, they successfully shut down the payloads. Johansson orders them to go to the control room where they will regroup. However, they didn't notice an infected person watching over them. It attacks Johansson with an axe. Mannings immediately shoots down the infected. Hearing the commotion on the comms, Jackler and Greenwich decide to head back, but Menzies stays in the furnace room. Kent and Boxen attend to Johansson, while Huntington is just scaredly watching them. When Manning screams at him, he eventually decides to help. Unfortunately, the infected is not yet dead and attacks Manning's. During the struggle, Manning's blows the head of the infected, splashing its blood on all of them. The infection spreads immediately, but Wit is fighting it off the best as he can. Seeing that the others are starting to get crazy, he warns Menzies through the comms to find a place to hide. He then runs away and jumps to the other side of the station. However, failing to grab onto the poles, he falls. Fortunately, because he's now partially infected, he survives the fall. However, Kent, who's starting to lose his sanity, is now hunting him. He is blaming Wit for the death of his teammates. When Kent is about to catch up with Wit, the infected Jackler suddenly attacks and beats him to death. As soon as Jackler is gone, Wit picks up Jackler's gun. 
After some time, he finds a laboratory. He tries to find medicine for the infection, but fails miserably. But what he discovered blows his mind. Seeing several mineral samples, Wit learns that the mineral is actually a frozen organic life form. It is a parasite that is called primordial ooze by a researcher. Its base instinct is predatory, which is why every infected person immediately goes berserk. Although the infection spreads fast, some people can resist the infection longer, like Wit. These people display advanced emotional stability. The previous record for the longest resistance was two hours. To make matters worse, the parasite replicates any organic matter it latches to. Basically, given enough time, it can replicate a whole human being. Besides, Wit learns that the end goal of the parasite is to become one dominant cell, an alpha. The researcher that conducted the research was Montoli. At this time, Wit hears a noise outside. Checking where the noise comes from, he is surprised when Menzies attacks him from behind. Menzies asks Wit if he's infected, to which Wit lies and says he's not. However, Menzies is still doubting him. Wit says that he's on the other side of the station when the infection spreads. Also, Jackler kills Kent, that's why he ends up with the gun. Menzies asks what's going on, and Wit brings him back to the lab. There, he explains everything to Menzies. Menzies asks about how they can stop it, but he points out that they can't. The only thing they can do is go back to Earth and report on the planet so no one ever comes back to Infinity again. Unfortunately, only Johansson and Huntington can call the headquarters. But now, Johansson is dead while Huntington is already infected. When they are about to start planning for their next move, the infected Manning suddenly comes charging at Menzies. Wit points his gun and warns him to stop. But Mannings also pulls out his gun and points it at Menzies, ordering Wit to put his gun down instead. Wit has no choice but to put his gun down. Mannings then says it can see Wit. Confused, Wit asks what is it that Mannings is talking about. However, Mannings doesn't answer and hysterically blames Wit for bringing them to Infinity. When he is about to shoot Menzies, Wit appeals to him, saying that he can choose not to kill Menzies because he's their friend. Menzies also begs him because he has a daughter waiting for him. Hearing this, Manning says that life is nothing without a choice. Then all of a sudden, he shoots himself. Unfortunately, some of Manning's blood gets into Menzies' face. Knowing that Menzies might be a problem later, Wit kills him. After some time, Wit starts to hallucinate and sees himself as one of the rampaging infected. Although he can resist the parasite, he's beginning to suffer mentally. A little later, he finds the infected Huntington recording a message for his kids. He points his gun at him and orders Huntington to get him home. But Huntington just shrugs him off. After sending the message to Earth, he tells Wit to take a seat. It seems like he is just like Wit, who can resist the infection for a long time. As it turns out, he had already called the headquarters. However, it will still take eight hours for them to be recalled to Earth. Hearing this, Wit panics and tells him that they won't last eight hours. As the two think about what to do, the infection is slowly consuming them. They start talking like drunk men, screaming, laughing, and threatening each other. In the end, Wit decides to go to Medbay alone. Meanwhile, in Medbay, Greenwich is already trying to cure herself because she is a medic. She turns out to be infected too, but doesn't turn into a murderer like Wit and Huntington. Looking in the mirror, she sees that some scutes are growing on her back. There is a noise nearby, and Jackler is coming. His arm also mutates into a club-like arm. He approaches her, and the two share an emotional moment together. As it turns out, Greenwich and Jackler are in a relationship and expecting their baby. However, when Greenwich realized she was infected, she had no choice but to get rid of their baby. Hearing this, Jackler gets angry and attacks her, resulting in a fight. Going back to Wit, he's surprised to see Huntington following him. Weirdly, upon arriving at Medbay, they get a glimpse of what just happened in the place in their minds. It's like the parasite that infects all of them has a hive mind. Then, they find Greenwich wounded. Wit immediately asks what they can do to slow down the infection. Nevertheless, Greenwich says that the parasite is too smart and that the only way to escape it is death. Just then, she passes away. With just the two of them left, Huntington suddenly points his gun at Wit. 
The two men then fight. When he finds an opportunity, Wit runs away and goes down a ladder to escape. Huntington talks to the parasite that is latched onto the ladder and follows Wit. Wit ambushes him and the two continue their fight. The parasite takes full control of Huntington now and wants to kill Wit, but their fight ends with Wit breaking Huntington's neck. Tired and slowly succumbing to the infection, Wit looks at their picture of Lisa. After resting for a while, he goes back to the med bay and records a message for the parasite. His voice echoes through the station and he tells the parasite that it fails. By choosing to tap into people's hatred, they only end up killing each other. Therefore, the parasite will not be able to learn more about humanity. However, if the parasite only takes its time to evolve without involving hurting anyone, things would have been different. He then continues that he only wants a better life for his family and that's why he's at Infinity. But because of the parasite's selfishness for dominance, he won't be able to return to his family. None of them will be able to return home. Remembering Lisa and their baby, Wit is ready to end everything right there by slitting his wrist. As his message plays on a loop, the dead bodies of the search and rescue team start to be covered in minerals. Also, the minerals start to form a puddle and a human-like figure emerges from it. And lastly, all of the blood from Wit's wrist is coming back into his body. Then suddenly, Wit wakes up with everyone around him alive and well. Greenwich tells him that Johansson wants to meet them in the control room as soon as possible. Wit is wondering about what is happening, but Mannings just tells him that the parasite is gone. As it turns out, the parasite healed all their wounds and brought them back to life. Before going to the group, Wit checks on the lab and finds out that the mineral samples are missing. At the control center, everyone is silent and still disturbed by what just happened to them. Having no idea what exactly happened, or even an explanation, the team reaches a consensus on simplifying their stories once they go back to Earth. They will also make sure that no one will return to Infinity ever again. Fortunately, the payloads were destroyed, and they also got wit. Therefore, all of their objectives are completed and their mission is a success. Captain Johansson asks Wit for the last time if he has anything to tell the group, and Wit says he has got none. Hearing this, the team prepares to slipstream back to Earth. At the last second, before they get transported, Wit sees five humanoid forms made out of minerals, and one of them is holding the picture of Lisa and Wit. As soon as they are back on Earth, medical personnel wearing personal protective equipment immediately ask them questions about themselves. Everyone is panicking like they cannot believe that the team is all back in one piece. They also ask the team if they were exposed to any foreign contaminants from the other planet. They all collectively say no. Everyone from the East Coast Search and Rescue team has been cleared. However, the personnel cannot get a scan reading from WIT. The chief asks him again if he was exposed to any foreign contaminants. WIT is not answering and tension is building up. Luckily, a scan appears and he is finally cleared. Hearing this, everyone feels relief. Even though it is a very long day for Wit and the others, they are only gone from Earth for 52 seconds. Afterward, Wit goes home to Lisa and they are very happy to see each other. The movie ends with Lisa and Wit breaking down crying as she reveals to him that she has received the news that he is already dead. Infinity displays an interesting space rage zombie plot. However, the premise given at the beginning of the movie about technological advancement affecting people's lives wasn't capitalized. For a two-hour movie, they could have at least emphasized this idea in the first quarter of the movie. But since the movie only focused on the space rage zombie plot for the whole two hours, it became a slow-paced movie. Regardless, if you want another kind of zombie movie, Infinity is a good one. Plus, the ending is just superb.